so hi guys as i told you in the previous video that we would be now moving forward in the previous collab regarding converting waveforms to spectrograms so in the previous video at last we looked at uh, a few audio waves plot and this is how it looked but now i just want to tell you one thing not with the help of this machine learning can actually predict a very good output or build a very good model for that we would be using spectrograms through which these wave forms would be uh, looking something like a 2d image and uh, from there uh, the spectrogram images would be fed to the neural network and it would be used to train the model so if you don't know about spectrogram it's totally fine you can go and look it over here and uh, a fourier transform converts a signal its, uh, to its component frequencies if you will uh, study regarding computer vision in the mathematical terms you will get to know about this fourier transform co concept it basically works using integration and some other mathematical concepts here we would be using tf.signal.fft that is fourier transform and uh, in comparison uh, stft that is tf.signal stft splits the signal into windows of times and runs a fourier transform on each window so it works like that so if you want to know more about this whole process this course or a video on audio signal processing and stft is a very good video for that i would recommend you to go and see it okay so coming to the part now we will define a function that is get spectrogram and what how to get spectrogram definitely we will give it the waveform and from there we would get a spectrogram so here i have used tf.cast and tf. can contact to uh, merge both of them and then uh, the zero padding is done here then the tl tf.signal.stft as i told you it is used for uh, converting the waveforms at each uh, wave present inside this uh, waveform now uh, we would be at last you obtain the magnitude of the stft because uh, similar things happen integration also i would just run this and we would be getting the return the spectrogram yeah so we have done with this function now we would start exploring the data and print the shapes of one example tensorized waveform and corresponding spectrogram and play the original audio so what are we doing here for waveform label in the first part we are just taking a random example very random and we are getting label from here using label dot num by decode uatf and spectrogram from this above defined function and then we will print label the waveform shape the spectrogram shape and display the uh, uh, audio form or uh, the audio's waveform so i would just run this and uh, yeah so this is the part label right waveform 16000 and spectrogram shape is 124 129 1 that is the 2d image that we are uh, getting and the audio playback i don't know if you would be able to hear this but still i am going to play it right and it plays something like right so yeah you can go to this notebook and play with it you can use any other example also if you want for example we could have used two here also so yeah and now uh, we would do you define plot spectrogram for plot spectrogram first uh, what we need to do we need to get spectrogram and for that we are taking spectrogram from the previous function and if length of spectrogram shape is greater than 2 then assert that whole mathematic part is done here and i would just define this function here and then we would now uh, perform this function that this get, uh, plot spectrogram so this is plot sub subplots and mp dot arrange and dot plot dot set title dot zlib and now we will plot we will be plotting the spectrogram here so i would just run this and uh, yeah this is what we get this is the waveform this is the spectrogram in the waveform you can see clearly the uh, wave waveform is represented in, in in terms of one of the words that we have already looked at because a limited words we are taking here yeah. it uh, i guess this is the uh, word down i guess and this is the spectrogram which we are getting now you must be thinking that how the machine learning is going to learn through this this 2d image guys uh, i would just run this example and you will get to know the exact reason uh, why we are using this part i would just run this and now we will example spectrograms of different data sets and uh, here we go you can see i would take a very uh, normal example let that be of up you can see this image that is of up and this image of that is of up you can clearly see the similarity between both of them same happens with uh, i would say one more example right you can see this is right image and uh, 
and this one is also a right image you can see this linear curve here and the straight line then and same happens here the linear curve over here and the straight line goes up there this is how I, I right now can see this machine learning is definitely going to look at every part of the spectrogram image if we can basically uh, imagine this like the audio part we compute, uh, converted that into a 2D image and now that 2D image would be given to the whole model and you can uh, think like that once the 2D images have been given and labels have been given the whole computer vision part can also work from there so we would be now building and training the model and we would be pre-processing the validation and testing data so I would just run this and run the same thing on the pre-processed data here we have already discussed about this in the previous lecture so I would just run this and yeah we are done with that so we will batch the training and validation set the batch size is going to be 64 training ds is obviously this and validation is same like that I would just run this and we would be now add, a, add data set dot cache and data set dot prefetch operations to reduce the latency while training the model so I would just run this and yeah so for the model we you will use a simple CNN network since you have transformed the audio files into test uh, spectrogram images as I have already told you this is nothing new when it comes to uh, 2d images I have we have already done a lot of examples on that let that be uh, dog versus cat let that be uh, uh, scissor uh, scissor pen and paper similar things now uh, so you will use a tf.kera sequential obviously and tf.keras.resizing to down sample the input in, in, input to enable the model to train faster we have also done this remember when we used to reduce the size of the image 1 slash 255.0 that is the similar thing I guess we are doing here now tf.keras.layers.normalization to normalize each pixel in the image based on its mean and standard division yeah, this is something new so for normalization adapt method we first need to be called on the training part so we are if you want you can literally go through each command search for it and nothing new is happening here yes sim uh, normalization is a something new which you must have not seen here uh, so this is we are doing normalization we are resizing it and we are providing the whole convolution 2d max pooling i would just run this and show you the whole model which is giving, we are taking this is the input image uh, we have already seen it in the previous uh, code snippet where it was giving our input of 124 129 and 1 so now once the whole model gets uh, down to us we would see the layers of the whole sequential model now here it is and yeah you can see the resizing layer is there the normalization then the con, uh, con 2d con 2d and max pooling is there then dropout layer the flatten layer the dense layer the dropout layer and the dense layer so these are the total parameters the trainable parameters and non trainable parameters are three so we are done with that i guess now coming to the part that we would configure the keras model with the adam optimizer and the cross cross entropy loss this is also similar thing we have done this i guess three to four times on us in e, e, even on our channel so i have just run this this is the matrix and now we would train it for 10 epochs let let now be that be 12 for now I would just change it to 12. I just <laughs> I just wanted to, and we would do history dot fit. Same things are happening. We are giving it training data set. We are giving it validation data set. We are giving it epochs that is 15, and we are giving it callbacks. Uh, so tf dot keras callbacks early stopping, and the verbose is one. That is we would be able to see it, and the patience is two. So you can see it happening here. The accuracy here looks uh, very low right now because obviously it's the first epoch training here so if we want to see a bit of uh, like the whole architecture we have done till now what we did we traveled from here while the model is training i will give you tell you that we imported the data we visualized the data here and we realized that okay this is in the form of uh, waveform so for that uh, directly we instead of uh, you know doing things on waveform we should convert this whole uh, whole waveform part into spectrogram so once we have done that in spectrogram obviously there would be a lot of similarities on all the images which are of same label like it is happening here the to go and go you go and no can also have same same things because both are ending at no o and that is the reason we converted all the waveform into spectrogram once we have converted all the waveforms into spectrogram it's just like playing with the images and computer vision nothing different uh, yeah we did normalization and norms we followed that but if you see the a very basic thing same so yeah we are done with that and the accuracy what we got is 88.38 which is i would say pretty good 
uh, I was expecting something above 90 but definitely if you uh, put the epoch at 15 I guess we would get that also for so okay let's do that once again what's bad in that let's get some accuracy above 90 and yeah you can I hope the model doesn't overfit uh, so the earliest uh, early fitting has been done here because the accuracy is 90 because the model was already trained by I guess because of that so early stopping happened because of the accuracy is reaching 90.86 which is pretty good now let's pl plot the training and validation loss curves and uh, yeah you can see so yeah we are done we uh, had that overfitting part happened because you can see that the uh, validation loss and the loss for uh, that of accu accuracy is going far 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 away from each other so I would just do that to uh, once again would happen that but uh, it's totally fine I guess we we while training the model just make sure you don't change the epochs above 10 because overfitting can happen and then we would used to do used to uh, maintain the process of cross validation so I would do just test audio and test labels and uh, you can see and similarly we, we we got the test set accuracy of 84% which is pretty good <laughs> even after we happen to get uh, some uh, bit of overfitting here so once we are done with the uh, evaluation part let's run the inference on audio file so the first file I am taking is of no we are taking we have taken one random file from here of no and let's see and let's run this and the results we got is yeah we got I guess our, our 80 percent of chances of get this command is no and the reason we, the reason we have got 20 percent of go was also because both have o at the end and while pronunciation no and go both sound similar but still 80 percent is chances are no and it is getting it solely basis on uh, of the model that we have trained which is a bit overfit and the images we have provided are not much we have I guess only taken 10% of the whole set if you take on I guess 50% of the whole set and don't do any uh, overfitting believe me you will get this accuracy of 96 to 97% and down is also happening that because of DO present there so it's very basic logic that you, you, you can get it when you think that from the part of the machine uh, or the part from the model that uh, how it must be looking at the images now let's run for uh, right so we didn't got anything in right the reason was nothing sounded like right just look at that nothing sounded like that no go and down both sound like that same because both had o at the second second character but right wasn't like anything now you must be thinking okay uh, what if we go for left so i would do that in front of you only i would simply take this code and uh, let's go for left and for left i would just go here and randomly take any one of it and uh, once we have got it i would just copy the path paste it here for now and yeah take this this thing and simply go here and paste it here and remove this from here so i would simply run this and yeah left also sounds nothing similar to anything else you can see nothing l e is there any character e? yeah it is actually here but yeah s and f is totally different so left and yes doesn't sound similar and that is the reason we got this prediction of 100% i don't think that same things would work if we train it on a whole uh, data set and even here we would get 96 to 97% accuracy so i guess that can be a bit of a uh, practice thing for you that you yourself go and train on the whole data set and try not to uh, to do things like me that you can see clear overfitting happening here i won't say clear overfit but yeah a lot of overfit is happening here and uh, yeah just make sure that cross validation happens properly and you train a good model and then see the results coming out and you can just show me your results in the comment section as well it would be really uh, helpful now if you want to even see the confusion matrix to check how well the model did classifying each of the commands in the test set this is how it looks uh, I would just yeah you can see for yes it is giving this for yeah something like that so I guess it gives gave only 72 percent accuracy something like that when it comes to stop so yeah you can just look at that and observe a lot of things through confusion matrix 
so yeah that's that is it for the video you can i would just pin the notebook as usual in the comment section and and not in the comment section in the description section you can go and play uh, with the notebook there and just tell me how did it feel after performing this whole audio recognition part because i this is the simplest way you converted the whole waveform into a spectrogram and after that you just did computer vision as usual so yeah it wasn't that difficult so thank you for watching the video i hope you liked it if you liked it please uh, try to support the channel by uh, subscribing and liking to the content and sharing it with the more machine learning enthusiast communities and uh, thank you and have a nice day